What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Well, the next gen Nintendo stuff is back in the news, this time with a release window that was brought up in a translated report pointing towards supply chain and it's, there's a lot there, but we'll get to the bottom of that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about Sony with the PlayStation 5 hitting a big time milestone and keeping on the idea of sales, Pikmin 4 did have some of its initial sales revealed in Japan, and it looks like this game is off to a massive start. So if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. This, of course, the sequel to Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl that released just a couple of years ago. And this is from Game & Mill Entertainment, who is publishing it, but based on the trailer, which you can see, and some of the some of the details that were revealed, it does look like they're at least improving on that initial offering. Now, according to them, some of the improvements include voice acting for all characters. That's good. I believe that was an issue that was pointed out a lot in the first one. A crossplay on all platforms, a big visual overhaul. They will have new characters, Squidward, Jimmy Neutron, and then obviously they will add in a bunch of characters as they get along closer to release, which is later on this year, actually. And that does feel like it came out pretty quick after the first one, but that is really what would happen back in the day rather than have, I guess, one game that you would build on top of for sometimes upwards of a decade, you would have games come out pretty close, a couple of years apart for sequels. Oh, that was the thing then. But in this case, it looks like they are literally just building on that first one with this sequel. So if you're a fan of that first one, might be worth checking this out at coming out later on this year. Also, Capcom is absolutely crushing it with many of its releases, save for Exo Primal, which uh, that was a bit more uh, controversial, I guess, with reviewers there when it comes to the quality and the offering itself. But it does appear that Capcom, in terms of its overall valuation, is through the roof, and it looks like they have no plans of slowing down. We can see this posted up. This over on Gaming Bolt, who is citing Takashi Machizuki, saying during its recent quarterly earnings call, Capcom confirmed that it intends to release an unannounced game by the end of the current fiscal year, that'd be March 31st, 2024, that will sell millions. A lot of confidence there in Mega Man X9. Now, uh, I mean, there's a good chance that this could be a, a new Monster Hunter game, which, yeah, that'd be pretty massive. And I mean, they've launched Monster Hunter technically earlier in a year before, so why not February of in March 2024, we get the next big Monster Hunter title and maybe they unveil it at Tokyo Game Show, that coming up again in a couple of months. So something to keep an eye on. Oh, and speaking of something to keep an eye on, Red Dead Redemption Remastered has been rumored all over the internet recently and it looks like some more evidence is piling up for uh, maybe an announcement here pretty soon. This was posted up over on X, which I'm, I'm still not used to, so you may hear me still say Twitter from time to time, but they say, Rockstar's new site update live an hour ago. Added a new reference within the games list and we can see Red Dead Redemption Rockstar Presents has the code name there that seems to point towards RDR1 Remastered SP or single player. So I, I mean, look, it's been rumored a lot. I do believe we're gonna see this announcement here pretty soon. I'm just trying to figure out how Rockstar or Take-Two announce it. Will they just one day show up and have a trailer and like, hey, Red Dead Redemption Remastered is coming out this holiday. I, it's gonna be exciting stuff and they can announce it that way if they'd like. Maybe they show it off at Gamescom. Maybe it's in a state of play or, or, or something from Xbox later on. Who knows? Maybe maybe it's going to be on the Switch as well. And Nintendo has it in their direct. What a way to unveil it there. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to Red Dead Redemption Remastered. I think it's going to be a lot of fun going back to a, what sounds like anyway, going to be kind of a fully rebuilt version of that original game. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Nintendo's next generation system that... You're starting to see more and more talk around this pop up online when it comes to uh, supply chain and manufacturers as, well, if it's coming out next year, they kind of have to start at least getting plans in place for providing all the necessary materials to build the thing in the first place. Now, if it's coming out like the first half or even first quarter of 2024, they're probably gonna start building it here soon. But recently a report started to make the rounds and many people sent it to me. So I went ahead and took a look to see what we were dealing with here. And well, we can see this for example, posted up by WCCF Tech, who says as reported by Notebook Check and Money DJ, 
More on them in a minute. It says Chinese manufacturer PixArt, which provided the SoC powering the Joy-Con sensors as well as other parts for previous Nintendo home consoles, such as the Wii and the Wii U, revealed in its latest financial report that a new console from a Japanese company that hasn't launched a new system in years, wonder that could be, they are supplying parts for a will release in early 2024. Now, I went ahead and took a look around. Notebook Check appears to quote Money DJ and looking at the, I guess the article report that they are posting up from, this passage here translated from Chinese saying, however, it is worth noting that the supply chain pointed out that Japanese game consoles will launch a new console that has not been seen for many years early next year. So as I looked around here, I basically wanted to find this exact wording outside of Money DJ. So I take a look at PixArt and others. I can't really find anything that actually says this. And in fact, over on Famaboards, one user said it was meant to be, said that they actually had someone translate it rather than go through machine learning translation, anything like that. And it just appears that Money DJ, the writer, is kind of giving their own speculation about PixArt's upcoming financial performance using their own prior rumor about a Q1 2024 release date, as in, oh, look, they're expecting to do better in the upcoming uh, fiscal year or even the first half of next year. Maybe that means that the next generation system is coming out around that time. Now, I will say... Yes, you're probably going to see financial reports around companies that are backing the next-gen system from Nintendo, even Sony or Microsoft, we can say, anything they want to do there. Yeah, they're probably going to do better when, when all these parts are being sold kind of behind the scenes for the supply chain and building these things. So that makes sense, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to sell and then it's all releasing in that quarter. They could be selling these parts a year before the system even comes out. So in this instance, it appears like it's more speculation than anything else on the writer for Money DJ. And as much as I'd like to tell you that Nintendo's next gen system is coming sooner rather than later, my expectation still remains holiday 2024. Just makes a ton of sense for Nintendo to get beyond this holiday where, let's face it, they're gonna sell a bunch of Switch systems next to their 2D Mario and Mario RPG and anything third party related they can stuff in there for that last holiday season. And then tell us about their next gen system probably first quarter of next year, maybe February or March, and then have a big run up for like eight months until they actually release the thing in October or November, right in time for that next holiday season. So I wouldn't go out there anticipating uh, maybe Nintendo to reveal this thing in the next two or three months in preparation for a first quarter 2024 release. I think we still have a bit of a ways to go before we see any of that. Next up, let's talk about the PlayStation 5, which has continued to sell very, very well. And in fact, has reached a milestone pretty quickly, all things considered. We know that there were very much supply constrained early on to where it was, I mean, it was impossible to find a PS5. And yes, the secondhand market with scalpers absolutely taking advantage of it with PS5s getting to a point where they were $1,500 on eBay and people were actually spending that kind of money for them. But we can see this posted up by Sony over on their website with the press release announcing that the PlayStation 5 surpasses 40 million in sales. Now, it's important to point out exactly what metric they're explaining here because... They've, they've talked about shipped numbers in their financial reports. So it was like 38 million or so that they shipped. So you may look at this and say, wait a minute, 40 million. It's only like, what, a one and a half million over what they reported with their financials. This is sold through to consumers. And it takes longer for these companies to get that information back because they basically have to hear from retailers and all this, and they can kind of get a gauge as to where they are with how many have sold through to consumers. Whereas when they ship a system out, trust me, I did ordering in retail, uh, they don't take those back. So they will be absolutely count them as, oh, we've shipped this many, we've been paid for this many, but now they know based on uh, customer feedback and of course feedback from retailers, how many customers have gotten their hands on the PlayStation 5 system. And looking at this great recovery from Sony based on what they had to deal with early on in the generation. And looking over at Microsoft who has also somewhat discussed their hardware numbers as I did see an article go up from 
from Jez Corden over on Windows Central. Sony is operating close to a two to one sales ratio, PS5 versus the Xbox series. And in fact, that article really kind of tries to push Microsoft along and say, hey, you got to put more focus on the console itself when it comes to sales. But back to Sony, looking at this, they also show kind of a rundown of some of the best selling PS5 games and no surprise, Astro is right at the top there. It kind of comes with all the PlayStation 5 systems, which that's probably why Sony should actually do something. Just throwing it out there, Sony, with Astro. And when I say do something, I mean like a big 3D or a big budget 3D platformer. You know, just, just an idea. But yeah, Sony continues to roll along with the PlayStation 5. We should get some more information from them here pretty soon, as I believe they will be reporting numbers and their financials and all of this to investors. But we do also have that Spider-Man 2 limited edition accessories and system with the covers coming up. I believe pre-order start today. We had some of the pricing leak out early, just in case you were wondering, we can take a look here, this over on D-Labs, who's been very consistent pretty much every time when it comes to uh, hardware getting out there or different games that have been appearing on databases and all this. But the PlayStation 5 console, this of course, Mar uh, Marvel Spider-Man 2 limited edition coming in at $599.9, so $600 US dollars. That will come with a code of the game. Very important to note there. A DualSense wireless controller. This is the one that has that nice Spider-Man 2 themed uh, on it. That will be $79.99 or $80. And then the face plates this is something a lot of people are looking at. These will be for standard or digital editions of the PlayStation 5. Those will be $65, which uh, I think that's about... I think that's right there with what it typically is for like those Galaxy ones that they did, maybe $5 difference or something uh, based on region. So not too bad there. I think what I'm going to do is get the DualSense controller. I like the way that looks. And then the face plates. So I'm uh, very happy that I don't have to buy the entire system again if I want that Spider-Man uh, to PS5 because I did end up buying the PS4 Pro Spider-Man uh, system, which looks really, really good along with that controller. So in this case... I'll just get the covers and slap them on my PS5 until I guess the next big game comes out that has covers that I, I want. But exciting stuff there all the way around. The PS5 hitting 40 million and well, there's Spider-Man 2 accessories and system going up for pre-sale today. Next up, let's talk about Pikmin 4 as we did get some of the sales that have been reported for Japan. Pikmin has done okay in Japan. The biggest issue we've run into with Pikmin, specifically the numbered entries, is whenever they debut, it's on Nintendo's really worst selling platforms. And we had one and two on the GameCube that didn't go over the best for Nintendo when it comes to install size. Uh, the Wii U, actually worse somehow than the GameCube. But now Pikmin 4 showing up on a platform with Nintendo that sold incredibly well, right? So I would expect some pretty good numbers for Pikmin. And in fact, we can see this posted up over on Stall Base Forum citing Famitsu. Pikmin 4 at the top though, 401,853 immediately uh, being the fastest selling Pikmin game ever in Japan. So the biggest debut we have here for it. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom at 15,616. Pretty big drop off from the first spot to the to the, to the second spot. Then we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, of, of course, Nobunaga's Ambition. We have that on the Switch and the PlayStation 4. Interesting to note that those are very, very close together, almost margin of error, 10,633 and then 10,434. Minecraft on the Switch, Splatoon 3, Nintendo Switch Sports, Final Fantasy 16 falling all the way to the ninth spot, 4,904 copies, which by the way, that means the Pikmin 4 immediately outsold Final Fantasy 16 in Japan, although I still believe Final Fantasy 16, the, the core audience for that game, it's probably more Western focused than it is in Japan. And then Super Smash Brothers Ultimate at, at the 10th spot. Moving over to hardware, the Switch is at the top, 71,180. By next week, we will have a report telling us that indeed it has crossed 30 million sold lifetime in Japan as it's now sitting at 29,995,000. Massive, massive milestone for the Switch. And I mean, it's right there when it comes to, I think what the 33 million or so it'll take to pass the DS. So uh, historic stuff there. PS5, 46,561. That's also kind of sneaking up on 4 million lifetime. Uh, PS4, 4,309. That's actually a pretty big jump for that. Maybe because of... Uh, 
Nobunaga's amb uh, ambition, maybe? And then uh, the Xbox Series, 1,158. Then the 3DS continues to roll along this time with 22. So looking at Pikmin 4, this is a really good start for it in Japan. We heard that in the UK, it also had a very, very big start. And it's pretty obvious this is going to become the best-selling Pikmin game in the franchise, which, by the way, the one it has to eclipse to become the best-selling one it's Pikmin 3 Deluxe on the Switch. So maybe this entire time, the franchise just need a successful platform to debut a new entry on. And well, here it is with the Switch, basically Nintendo's best selling system. And really when it comes to software, the best Nintendo's seen now over 1 billion pieces. So yeah, I think at this point, it's gonna be very similar to what happened with Kirby when Forgotten Land came out that eventually cruised to becoming the best selling Kirby game in the franchise. Pikmin 4 should easily do that. And in fact, I wouldn't be shocked if by the end of this year, we heard that it's done just that. It is a very good game. I recommend checking it out, even if you've never played a Pikmin game. Certainly a good way, believe it or not, to jump into the series. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about actually a really cool surprise that Nintendo dropped on us the other night, and that has to do with their Nintendo Switch online service, specifically the Game Boy application, as we had these two games, you can see the trailer, drop. I always like, by the way, seeing these trailers that Nintendo releases as they kind of create new ones for these older titles that some of you may have nostalgia for, or who knows, maybe this is the first time you've seen these games, that being The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages and The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. So maybe you went back and played one of these isometric top-down Zelda games for the first time with the online app. I fully recommend going back and playing both of these games. They are very, very good. Now, it's going to be split somewhat based on uh, who liked which game better. I I feel like I like Seasons more. It has been a little while since I played it. I remember having Seasons on my Game Boy Color, absolutely loving this game. I mean, I played Link's Awakening like crazy, and then we get the Game Boy Color uh, top-down Zelda game, and it, it was awesome. So yeah, absolutely go check these out. And what's really cool is it's not even locked the expansion pack. Remember, the Game Boy Color games are part of that $20 tier that Nintendo has. So if you if you haven't opened your Game Boy app for a while, go check these games out. You can go with either one. It's still that classic Zelda structure that I still prefer even over something like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. And I don't really think we're going to see many more of these, or at least not as frequently as we, we used to at this point. So go check these out. Absolute classics. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're going to take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday. Or I ask, do you own a PS5? 54% now say yes. Do you remember we ran this poll like a year or so ago? And it was it was definitely like 54% say, no, I can't find one. So yeah, it appears that it is much, much easier now to find a PS5 if you want one. In fact, 17% say they still plan to get one in the future. And then 29% say, no, I, I have no interest in getting a PS5. So uh, yeah, it seems like Sony continues to roll along. I've seen some people kind of look at that and say, wow, 40 million have sold? Like, am I missing something here? Well, to be honest, Sony's done a pretty good job kind of positioning the PlayStation brand in general, kind of the default system to buy if you want to play, uh, Call, well, Call of Duty for a little while, but like FIFA or Madden or anything like that, going back to the PS4, that was a big strategy of theirs. And I think that's one of the reasons they were very concerned about losing Call of Duty and especially the marketing around it, because that is what really set the PS4 up for success when it comes to the mainstream. We'll see what happens with Sony as we go along and eventually that marketing falls off. But for Call of Duty, they got it for the next 10 years. So who knows, maybe that's enough for them to continue positioning the PS5 as the mainstream system. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Blurted Nonsense who says, I have two kids and all three of us have Switches. If it wasn't for game sharing, I wouldn't be able to let them play a lot of games together without game sharing. Nintendo needs to have a true family pass. This is something I, I hope to see more from Nintendo as we go into their next gen platform. I know there's a lot of talk around hardware. I hope that they also have innovation set up for their, their software, their online infrastructure, their community. There's a lot that they can build on and frankly improve on for what they have with the Switch. And a way to do game sharing, I think would be great as we know with Nintendo. They like to protect their IPs, they like to protect their games, and they hate dropping prices on their titles. And probably, in their mind, game sharing, letting two people access one digital game, is kind of like cutting that price in half. So, I, again, I'd like to see Nintendo figure it out because they are also selling 
or want to sell multiple Switch systems and probably this next platform to one household. So you gotta also understand that, yeah, they wanna also share their games around. So that's something I hope Nintendo can figure out, especially as we go into 2024, when we're expecting that big grand unveiling. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today, where there's more Nintendo next generation news and updates that are kind of spinning around the internet. When are you though expecting for Nintendo to finally tell us what their plans are? And then also, what about the PlayStation 5 hitting 40 million units sold? Or maybe those, those Spider-Man accessories and covers, are you picking any of those up? And then Pikmin 4 off to a massive start in Japan. Have you picked it up and what do you think of the game? Thanks guys for watching. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time for Newswave.